Today I want to talk to you about some practical tips to help you get into the flow of painting. And something that can make or break that flow is how you set up your paint. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Bell. I'm a mixed media painter from New England. I make mostly landscape paintings and sometimes I also art journal. I've gone through lots of paint setups over the years, lots of trial and error to figure out what works for me. And what I've found is that a really thoughtful paint setup is often overlooked, but it's super important to your process. Benjamin. No. No. With oils and watercolors, it's a little bit easier because those types of paints can be left out for you to dip into and out of more easily, but with acrylics, that's not really the case. I use a lot of acrylics, and so this presented a bit of a problem-solving challenge. My main two things that I was trying to solve was keeping the paint wet so that I could either leave it out for a couple of days, even, or just a few hours, and also how to get to painting more quickly. Let's dive in. I'm going to show you two different paint setups and then I'm going to use those to do some painting and show you how I actually use them in my process. The first paint setup that I'm going to show you today came about for a couple of reasons. They are the reasons that I mentioned before. I wanted to keep my paint wet and I wanted to be able to get painting quickly, but I also didn't want to have a bunch of paints cluttering my table. I also like to mix color intuitively and I didn't want to have to keep doing the stop start thing to grab another color um, or to walk away on my shelf and grab something from there. I like to be able to visually see what I like to use in front of me. That solution for me was a palette box. I'm very excited to show it to you, so let's take a look. So here's the palette box that I use and I'm just Looking at this in the camera, because this looks like this beautiful, colorful buffet. And this box I got from Michaels. You can get one of these probably from anywhere. I'm going to guess that Amazon has them. And what it is, just so that you can look for one, is it's a jewelry making organizer. And this one has dividers in it that you can see. These dividers are already permanently in there. These aren't the removable ones. I haven't tried it with removable ones. So you'll probably, if you're going to do this, want to try to find something where these don't come out. They're permanent um, just so the paints don't leak underneath to each other. These aren't super fluid paints though. So it's if you've got to try it with something removable, it's probably going to be okay. All right, so let's open this up and just take a look at what's in here. And let me see if I can show you, let me see if I can show you just how colorful this is and how rich. Opening this up to paint is like an absolute feast. I can't even tell you. It's just got all my favorites in there. These are just out of the bottle colors, um, except for the white over here. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But this just makes it really easy to paint intuitively because I can just come in here and grab any color I want and mix it in. So the paint that is in here is actually a special mixture that I make. Um, I'm probably gonna go into that more in a different video. I was gonna put it in this one, but it was gonna end up making it super, super long. Um, these are the ones that I make and it is made of Liquitex paints. But suffice to say, what you probably want to put in here is nothing too fluid and nothing too heavy. So what does that mean? It means that something like this is best for soft body paints or medium body paints. I think fluid is going to be a mess for obvious reasons. And then heavy body, I think there's less moisture in those paints. And so I, you could try it but it's gonna be expensive for one thing. And for another, I just don't know how well the paints would stay wet for something like that. So the colors that I chose to put in here, um, if you're familiar with color theory, are largely just a warm and a cool. 
for the most part from each of the main colors. I don't like purple, so I don't paint with purple. I can make it if I need to, but it's not it's not a convenience color I need to have in here. So I've got, you know, warms and cool blues and then a fun blue, and I've got a warm and a cool green and then a fun green. I've got two yellows. I have a lot of different variations of the red family um, because that's what I like. I have a warm red and a cool red and then I don't use magenta a lot but sometimes you need it for mixing and so I've got it in there. This particular pink is light pink by Liquitex. I use it very very often as a neutralizing color and just mixing it a little bit into all of the colors that I use to create a harmonious painting. These are just some mixing neutrals and that's another little tip is if you want to neutralize colors you could just pick a neutral to go into all of your other colors that you're using to neutralize them and it'll also make them harmonious. Over here I have, this is actually a mixture of parchment and Titan Buff by Liquitex and because I it would have probably just been tight and buff because I prefer that a little more, but because of the mixture that I use, and again, I'll show you that in another video, I could only get tight and buff of the one part and parchment of the other part, and so this is a mixture. And then this is a mixed white. I don't really like um, a harsh titanium white. It's got too much of a blue tone and it gives a lot of chalkiness to the colors that I use. So this is essentially titanium white with a couple different yellows mixed into it, just warms and cool yellows to just make it a little bit more of a creamy white instead. And this magical being makes it very easy to just grab the colors I want, paint intuitively, and it ends up being harmonious because I'm just pulling paints from this box. Even though there's a lot of different colors in here, what I'll end up doing when I'm mixing, because you can kind of see from these, is I will keep adding colors to color that is already on my palette, and that's what helps keep things harmonious. So if you've got a little bit of color that's in all the other colors on your painting, you're gonna create a lot of harmony. A lot of people have asked me this, is whether these actually stay wet and how I keep them wet. And the answer to the first question is yes, they absolutely do stay wet. I've had a palette box prior to this and I set it aside for about a year. So I wasn't opening or closing it, but I also wasn't adding water and it stayed wet. The paint was still usable inside. It was a little bit goopy, um, but the paint was definitely still wet. So yes, this definitely does work. And what I usually do is before I'm gonna close it for the day, I might just do a little bit of a spray and then I do the lid too, so that I'm not watering down all the paints, but this just kind of keeps it in a little bit more of a humid environment. And so again, the paints that you wanna use in here are gonna be either soft body or medium body. Liquitex Basics makes really great medium body paints. I've been using these for years and years and years. Um, again, the mixture that I have in these bottles, which is what's in here, is also a mixture of Liquitex paints. And these aren't professional quality paints in the traditional sense, like the heavy bodies but they are far more pigmented than student grade paints and I find these are great for anything I wanna do. I've never had a problem with these paints ever. And just lastly, when I'm painting, I sometimes use these when I just wanna get a lot of paint out and want to create a bunch of goopy paint that's mixed together in one of these little compartments that leaves it so that I can keep dipping into that mixed paint. And another good idea is palette paper. And if you've never used this, it's just got a bit of a sheen to it, a bit of a waxy surface. And I can actually go through multiple painting sessions with one piece of paper if you're trying to be less wasteful. I'll just keep putting paint on top of more paint until it's just completely unusable. So the combination of these little palettes and palette paper in this paint box makes it really easy to get in and out of painting quickly. There's really not a lot of cleanup to this as you can see. I actually just let the paint dry right in these. It doesn't bother me. It builds up after a while and you can soak them or peel them out or you could use palette paper. And again, this is gonna stay wet for you for a really long time if you just spray a little bit of water in there every now and again. And 
just also as an aside, I do leave this open when I'm painting. I'm not dipping into this and then like closing it to keep the paint wet. I leave it like this and dip into it. The moisture that's at the bottom of the paint helps to keep the surface of the paint from drying. So that's kind of how that works. So the other method that I use came about because the palette box isn't so great for one type of painting and that is very big painting or using mixed media tools. Now the palette box is good for small to medium paintings um, if you're just using smaller to medium sized brushes. Do use it also on my 22 by 30 inch Bristol paper. So I still do use it to paint big, but if I wanna be able to use a big brush or get some mixed media tools in there or load up a stamp with paint, I really need to use something else. I also didn't want to be wasting huge amounts of paint since now I would be using more paint and putting more paint out on my palette. And again, having kids and having to step away frequently, I needed something that wouldn't just give me more space, but would also help me keep the paint wet. And that entered a homemade stay wet palette. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make these. The store-bought ones can get pretty expensive. Um, a lot of you have probably seen them. They come with a sponge inside and special papers you can buy. And if you like those, keep using that. I'm not knocking it. But with acrylic paint, it's easy for the sponge and things like that to get gross after a while. And this setup is a little bit long lasting, but it's easy to replace everything and refresh the palette as you go. So let's take a look and I'll show you some options for how to put one of those together. So here is an option for a Stay Wet palette. The first thing you wanna do is get some sort of a tray. This is a cafeteria tray. Um, I know Michaels and other craft stores sell deeper trays that are about one inch deep and I have some of those too. If you have the forethought, like I did not, um, get two of them because you can flip it upside down on top of the other one to use as a perfect cover and that will help your paint stay wet even longer. So the first thing you're going to do is get some kind of paper towel. There's the usual kind that you have for your kitchen or if you're in the US and I'm assuming other countries probably have some verges of these. These are just shop towels from the hardware store. Big box stores like Home Depot have them. These are a little bit more cloth-like and also as a bonus if you like to use them to roll and pull paint off it won't leave a pattern on your painting. So these are fun for that but I'm going to actually show you this with the regular kitchen ones just so you don't think that you need these to make this work. You absolutely don't. So the best way to do this is to take four of these and you're going to overlap them. So you'll do two like this that are overlapping a bit. And then you're gonna build another layer on top. And this acts like the sponge in those other ones that you see in the store. And then you're gonna just take some water and you're gonna pour some in here, let the paper towels get nice and wet. It's okay if you pour a little bit too much water. You're just gonna take this and angle it so that, see how it's pulling the water over here? So that you can get the whole surface wet. Like I said, we can get the excess off so you can be kind of generous with your water so it doesn't take forever. And so then once the whole thing is pretty wet, you don't want it too soaking. And so it's good to take your water. Let's see if I cannot make a mess. Lift up the corner and you're just gonna drain the excess back out. Now this will actually stay damp for quite some time. People have actually covered these and forgotten about them for weeks at a time and grown mold in there. So try not to do that. Um, but these, it definitely does work. So some options, cause you obviously you don't wanna put your paint right on top of this for paper to put on top of it are, this is deli paper. These are 12 by 12 squares. I got mine from Amazon. I got like a whole stack of a thousand of them for 20 bucks or something way back when. So I have a ton of these 
And I'll usually just put one on here, but if I need a lot of space, um, I can layer two. And these are thin enough where even though it's layered right here, it'll still keep the paint pretty wet. If you don't have deli paper, the other option you can use is sheets of tracing paper. I think, yeah, the cover's been ripped off this. This is just the Strathmore, the yellow one, um, sheets of tracing paper. And you can actually buy sizes that will fit your tray exactly so it's not hanging over the edges. But like I said, you can just buy tracing paper. This will work the same as deli paper. What you're really going for is really thin paper that doesn't have a really waxy surface to it. That's it. And like I said, it'll stay wet for a really long time. The paper towels are reusable for a while. So once this dries out, you can re-wet those paper towels. You don't need to throw those away. These are the blue ones that were in here that I just pulled out so that I could show you this. They do get a little bit of crusty after a while. And this is why I don't like the store-bought ones with the sponge because my sponge would eventually look like this. And once that happens and you get too much acrylic paint on it, it's harder for it to hold water and stay wet on the surface of it. But, you know, just as you can see, you can get a lot of use out of the paper towels. So if you're worried about wastefulness, um, you can get a lot of mileage out of these and out of the kitchen ones. So as you can see, if I wanna use a big brush like this, this is a much better option than the paint palette box because I can come here and squeeze out a whole bunch of paint like that and now I can really get my brush in there and really load up my brush generously and have fun painting. And the other thing this is going to allow you to do is to be able to get into the paint with some mixed media tools. If you want to say load up a brayer with paint on your palette, you've got space to do that and you can go ahead and roll it up and put on a stamp. You have room to dip your stamp directly into the paint on your palette. It's actually a great way to maybe use up some paint that's already on there to get some mark making going on a painting. And you can also fit more mixed media tools on here so you could use these to pick up some of the paint and get them on your painting so that you can make different marks. Let's put all this together to create some first layers of a painting. I'm actually going to use both palettes at the same time to give you some ideas on how this could look for you. So I think I've got everything set up and I'm just going to go in here and start making kind of like a fun background and just start making some marks and just showing you where, you know, you can use either of these palettes or both of them together uh, to do some interesting things. I just want to make this blue. A little bit darker and a little bit more neutral so I'm gonna add these colors to it and I want a good amount of it because I want to use my big brush and this makes a nice deep ocean blue at least the ocean from where I'm from and so I can get these big you know strokes where I can't get in there really well with a brush like this, or even one that's bigger. So I'm just covering up some of the paper, but I also want to leave some of these big brush marks because they're fun. Maybe add a bit of a different color so I can just come back in here get a good amount of paint that's different and just start layering some different marks and colors and then I want to go back to this lighter blue but I want some of that in it so as you can see having this palette space with a bigger brush can help you create more options within the same color family by just having all this space and easy way to mix stuff together and you could even take the brayer and dip it in the paint and just add marks in there so I'm gonna go ahead and I could dip this right in 
you know, and get paint on there. I can paint it on. This is just a stamp I made ages ago that I really like. And so I can come in here and get right in there and leave some nice marks on there. And then this is where the smaller palette might come in handy is if, you know, I want to make some smaller stuff. I can, of course, still use this, but at least having this palette box here is really nice, even if I end up doing my mixing here, because maybe I don't need to put out, you know, a lot of this brown paint. I'm just using it to neutralize something. So being able to pull some accent colors for the painting from here for mixing is going to be really nice. So I am actually, I already have some of the same phthalo blue in there. So I can come mix that, get a really nice dark I like a lot of movement in my marks, so I try to think of different ways that I can move the brush while I'm painting. And I just want to add some value contrast to this, but again, um, I don't have to use that. I just have that there to show you that it's still an option, but you can come over here and just pull from this palette and that way you're not having to like constantly be squeezing out oh I need a little bit of white now I'm going to get the white now I need a little bit of this but now I'm having to go grab a bottle and squeeze that out I only need to squeeze out the stuff I'm going to use that I know I'm going to use in large amounts if I'm just pulling a little bit I can pull it from this palette over here and everything's going to stay wet and I don't have to worry about it. So I can use this to add some more marks. So I'm going to stop here and leave this to dry, but I hope you can see that using these in one way or another or together is letting me paint with a lot of ease in my process, and that's what we want. I was able to set this up in just under a minute, really, if I wasn't demoing it and getting to paint, and I really don't have much to clean up. I can throw my brushes in the water. I could just leave this sitting on the palette and take this whole thing and I actually just shove it in one of my um, art studio drawers and it stays pretty wet in there for a couple days without even a cover on it. So I hope that this is helpful for you and it inspires you to either try these or to come up with some problem solving for your own painting challenges. I hope that you can see that so much of art is problem solving. Identifying where your barriers are to creating and then coming up with solutions for those to make it easier for you to paint. If you can look at your process as a problem to solve the way you would look at a painting to solve, you'll be able to start figuring out what the things are that are tripping you up from making more art, which is honestly what we all want to be doing. You'll have to let me know if you try one of these palettes or if you use something similar. Likes and comments help boost this channel and it will get seen and hopefully be helpful to more people, but it also allows me to keep making content for you guys. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. You guys are always the best and give the nicest comments and I super appreciate it. It makes all of this hard work worth it and I will see you next time.